dear viewer welcome uh, to this conversation here we have and it happens to be all of them graduated from north south university and uh, shajol started uh, his business instead of looking for a job i think he started it during uh, the fagent of studying at north south university and uh, Ehsanul went to uh, pursue his graduate studies in Singapore and Rafael went to Canada University of British Columbia to pursue his graduate studies so let's uh, let's get to know their uh, intimate uh, experience uh, so far and they how they would like to uh, pursue their career so shajol i understand that you started your business the question is that uh, what did inspire you to start your own business instead of looking for a job sir i start uh, okay um i started my business while i was in nsu uh, in my last uh, years and uh, the job market wasn't so steady at that time you know it was but uh, uh, i wanted to start something of my own from the very very beginning and uh, with without any experience so earlier stage it was tough but i kept myself motivated you know i was i used to uh, attend some business conference and uh, i used to watch a lot of videos and stuff so but uh, i wasn't from a business background i was from a computer science background but business uh, was you know motivational or inspirational doing business was motivational and inspirational for me so i started without any experience and without thinking of any future uh, plans or you know uh, but i i didn't want to work for uh, someone from the very beginning that's that's about it okay thank you esan talk about your uh, uh, graduate program your university you are in uh, yes sir i have uh, completed my bachelor's in electrical and electronic engineering from nasat university and then i worked in ruby adiata limited Uh, in information and technology department and then uh, after that i got a good opportunity in nanyang technological university singapore and uh, i have enrolled in master of science in communications engineering program it is mainly focusing on telecommunication and it is a research intensive public university and it is known for research excellence and technological innovation thank you thank you rafael uh, can you hear me please speak about your uh, uh, program and the university uh, you are in now in in vancouver yeah sure uh, sir me and ayasan we are classmates so we graduated from the same program at north south university um after graduating i also worked at the university itself for two semesters as a lab officer and then i came at the university of british columbia to pursue my masters in electrical engineering uh although my masters is named uh, electrical engineering however because it's a research intensive program uh, my most of my time is spent in the lab working on my master thesis which revolves around the biomedical application area so the technology that we are working in the lab with is called 3d bioprinting and it's a upcoming emerging technology which you might have already heard of okay thank you shajol now i think uh, you have an inspiration or the vision to develop a large farm certainly you do not like to be a small one now what are the barriers you are facing to develop a large uh, computer farm or what you have started to uh, develop so honestly uh, starting uh, you know planning to start or you know or planning to go big in bangladesh as a starter is tough because the the bangladesh business environment and the policies uh the taxing issues or you know these issues do not are not favorable favorable for an initial business or an entrepreneur you know to plan big or to go beyond the uh you know go beyond this uh, go beyond a certain scale Okay so Now, let me stop you here and ask me that i understand that you are in laptop that means computer uh, uh, type of products and usually yes. it's a matured product 
and uh, as the technology yes. matures, then the scope of value addition usually gets limited, and often the industry gets monopolized by large firm. So, uh, and, and, and in this mature industry, do you think it is limiting your ability to build this large business being a startup? To build a large scale, yes, it is a matured industry. Laptop is, uh, you know, this product category is already matured, but there are still scope to invent, you know, but not perspective to Bangladesh, I'm saying. Like, you know, it's still, uh, you know, there are new inventions, there are uh, new products, there are new designs, there are still a lot of improvements to be done uh, in these categories, but not in, in, you know, in perspective to Bangladesh and in perspective to value addition in Bangladesh. I understand. The reason is that, uh, or, or might be, it might be the reason that incremental innovation of matured products often requires significant uh, R&D investment. And you need to have yes. significant complementary capacity to roll them out. Uh, and uh, in Bangladesh certainly doesn't have that kind of R&D capacity. As a result, uh, your company might be uh, facing the uh, following the path of some well-known players of the world to expand your business. We'll come to, to this point later on. Now, uh, uh, Raphael, you spoke about that uh, 3D bioprinting. Uh, and 3D bioprinting, that means a uh, 3D printer to produce uh, uh, biological organs or, or, or tissue or other, other objects, uh, how you would imagine. Now, what is its current stage of maturity in terms of uh, you know, technological invention or scientific discovery, if you'd like to begin with, then product innovation and roll them out and forming business and profitable business around them. So in this cycle, of the, in, in the typical s curve, why is now bioprinting now? Or why is the 3D bioprinting now? Yeah, sure, sir. Um, as you rightly said, it's, it's about making a conventional 3D printer, enable it so that it can produce uh, uh, biological tissues and host living cells. So uh, in terms of that, uh, because I work on the research area, I'll start there. Uh, the first thing first is uh, making an actual organ. It's a complex thing. It's a very complex issue. So in terms of research end, we are working on the incremental research where we are just trying to figure out what works best and what doesn't. However, the technology in terms of 3D bioprinting, it already matured as to it is widely available throughout the research uh, uh, labs. So, so even uh, one of the research, research labs from UVC actually ventured into a startup, which is called Aspect Biosystems, and they uh, produce uh, extrusion-based 3D bioprinters commercially and then supply to the labs who then print and research on different techniques of the printing and try to optimize it uh, on a very beginning early stage. At this point, we cannot really print organs. However, what we can do is use those 3D bioprinted uh, objects to screen drugs or do in, in vitro testing in the lab. Okay, thank you. Esan, you mentioned that your university is known for its strong research capacity. Could you yes, talk sir. about the relationship between your university and startups and the tech community of Singapore. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you. Current state and how has it been developed uh, and how is it trained going forward? Yes, sir. Basically, sir, uh, in my university, Nanyang Technological University, we have a center for research and it is known as Cradle, Center for Research and Development in Learning. So its main function is it actually helps us to promote uh, new leadership and also new innovation and also foster entrepreneurship, which, which is very important. And this uh, research center actually helps to promote new startup. Now we have Intuitive PTE Limited, which is our university's innovation and enterprise company. And this company's goal is to facilitate the commercialization of research and also encourage innovation and it actually helps to develop an innovative ecosystem. Okay, thank you. Shajol, uh, and now as we are speaking regarding to the value addition and build, uh, turning a small farm into a large farm, what you are in, 
have you ever looked into the opportunity of leveraging the capacity of universities particularly research capacities of universities to add to value to your product or add some uh, value added features to your product uh, what is your impression about the research capacities of our universities to support industry to innovate or add value to their products so honestly the products that i am dealing with uh, our university research and uh, you know in bangladesh university research don't have much to you know get involved with you know uh, these are matured as you said these are matured products so these are uh, very highly you know r and uh, d based uh, developed products so you know maybe maybe there is an opportunity for uh, these products related accessories and uh, you know this product is, you know iot based products or like you know there is a company called in uh, Applomatic BD. They sell IoT based products which are operated uh, by phones or laptops in homes. Those kind of products has research, uh, you know, those kind of products have research uh, necessity by our university students or graduates. But these matured uh, products, we don't have much to do in Bangladesh because this is already, uh, you know, done and, you know, by big players already. So, we don't have much to do and we do not, do not have the educational capacity or background uh, to do it you know countries like taiwan and chinese they have they have those expertise they have those tools and skills to innovate uh, you know how to optimize batteries how to uh, uh, how to give a better sound quality how to uh, narrow down the bezels of uh, displays this kind of innovation Thank you. Uh, mentioned a very very important points like incremental progression of mature product, product, product is quite tougher and then starting a new thing. Like a recent research at Stanford University, what has found as the product starts getting mature or the technology starts getting mature, then the return on the R&D investments keeps, uh, you know, starts falling. That means there is a inverse relationship uh, between the technology uh, maturity and the return on the R&D investment. And as Bangladesh is a basically late comer, so at this point of time, maybe it may not be wise to target mature products to increase value through our uh, research. Rather, we should look for some emerging products or emerging technologies like you mentioned, IOTs and others. That's a good observation. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, Rafael, uh, what you were saying that uh, bioprinting of, uh, or the 3D bioprinting, and it is at the early stage, uh, that means uh, a commercial innovation probably would take a few years uh, down the road. And usually that is the point startups start getting active. They start getting some concepts from university laboratories and they start uh, prototyping some commercial products uh, and they start working in partnership with the universities and other research institutions to you know, fine tune the technology and the, uh, and, the, and the innovation concept. But what is now the current situation of startups? around the research you have been doing at your university. Yeah, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, there are already emerging startups uh, regarding this 3D bioprinting technologies, and they are mainly based out of Vancouver near UBC. As I said, uh, there are two startups that I particularly know of. Uh, one of them is Selink, who mm -hmm. specializes in selling the ink for the 3D bioprinter. So they work with the universities to invent and identify new types of ink for 3D bioprinting. And then there is another startup that I mentioned previously, like Aspect Biosystems. So they are trying to make and design new types of 3D bioprinter. And then they are, what they're doing is they're working closely with the labs to identify proper printing mechanism and then get it back to the lab so that there is an iteration an improvement on the bioprinter itself. And then they bring it to themselves and then try to commercialize. And this thing, as it's getting attention, uh, there are more startups coming up. Good point. So it seems to be there is a focus of collaborating with the university, collaborating with the research laboratories to produce additional knowledge, to you know, produce additional ideas, to advance their initial ideas so that they start getting better. 
and also less fast you produce. So it seems to be that partnership is working well with respect to the startups and the lab you are uh, working yes. on. Yes, in fact, sir, some of the startups are spin off from the labs that worked at the university. Okay. So it means that they had a strong research footprint. And in the absence yes. of the research, they cannot just push the thing, whatever they have, and expecting that profitable revenue will eventually show up because the Definitely. idea is at the embryonic stage. And on the other hand, we spoke to Shajol, and Shajol told that, look, if it is a mature thing, then you have not much to add value in the local capacity. That means you know, there are two problems here. One thing is that if you get into the mature product, mature technology, as if there is a readily available market, but you have no room, no a little room to add value to that. On the other hand, if you go with the very early stage product, then there is not much market for that. Because product has very poor maturity, it usually you know, emerges in a primitive form, then there is a need for strong R&D relationship with universities. And that's the place probably we have some you know, thinking to do that uh, how to empower Bangladesh to leverage technology by adding increasing value to that. Uh, yes, Yesan, I would ask you a question regarding to quality of education. Often uh, we are under the impression that quality of education in Bangladesh is quite poor and particularly private universities are offering quality education at all. Now with respect to your experience uh, at, uh, in, you know, in Singapore, how do you, how do you rate how not how would you rate? I, I would rather say how would you rather compare the education what you got at North South University and the under edu undergraduate education offered by the yes, university sir. where you are studying now? Yes, thank you very much, sir. Sir, basically um, there is a huge difference that uh, I have come across where in Nanyang Technological University and studying here. The thing is that, sir, our curriculum in uh, North South University. Uh, is I think a little bit old, uh, sorry to say, sir, because uh, because our curriculum is uh, we are studying a lot of things like motors, generators, and transformers. That is good, but the recent technologies like the blockchain technology uh, or 5G technologies that need to be I think include I think in our syllabus. And another thing is that sir, IoT, Internet of Things. We know that the Internet of Things uh, plays an important role in telecommunication field and either. And uh, I think uh, it's a very big factor, telecommunication field in uh, IoT. But uh, I, I feel that, sir, the education quality uh, in Singapore is uh, quite methodic. Because, sir, um, in previously, I studied in North South University. It was quite that, uh, okay, we have a mid, so we have to study, okay, okay. But we have a final exam. Uh, uh, sir, can you hear me? No, we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Oh, maybe I think a video problem. Sorry, sir. Uh, in our final exam or mid exam uh, in uh, Nasser University, we studied hard and we have to, sometimes we have to memorize something. But in, in Singapore, the education quality is quite different because uh, uh, in, in, I have appeared my final exams, the questions that I have not seen anywhere in, 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 in anywhere in the lectures, but uh, the application based, I think, uh, that is the reason that uh, the education in overseas is very, very uh, high. The impact of education is very high and the quality of education is very, very high because sir, uh, the application based learning is actually here is uh, application based learning and it is helps a student to apply the knowledge of engineering. Uh, that, is, I, uh, that is my thing. Thank you very much. And uh, Rafael. The laboratory you are working now, where is the funding coming from to pay graduate students, buy equipment, that means conducting the research? Yes, sir. So the funding that comes from it's primarily from the government sources. So mm -hmm. a large chunk of the funding that comes from is through the National Research Council in Canada. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's one of those grants that continually they supply the PIs with new fund each year, depending on the research goals. Also, uh, one of the things that uh, my lab works with is probably partnering with uh, companies and startups who are looking to find answers to things they're trying to develop or they would work in the future. So uh, some of the students, uh, for example, the project that I work in is a research collaboration between the government and the uh, 
application that would happen in the future, the technology that they are working on. Even some of the funding that uh, come to the lab are also from foreign uh, foreign ministries, uh, like uh, agencies that are outside of Canada. For example, one of the research funding also uh, in our lab also comes from the Geography Research Institute in Korea. So mm -hmm. they are also funding research in our own lab to find out uh, and get results from some of the things that they are trying to make work with. Okay. Now, it seems that uh, upon listening from uh, three of you, uh, that uh, our universities do not have strong research capacity. And, and, and in absence of this research capacity, it is often difficult to integrate graduate or undergraduate students, particularly undergraduate students, into the application agents that uh, what could be the future application of certain technologies and that means emerging technologies. And uh, what Rafael was saying is that uh, that research is quite a bit of an essential or mandatory to open new path, to help startup, to advance their ideas, to, you know, to improve their products, to, you know, their technology, so that eventually the products and products start penetrating in the market. And that is the reason there is a strong partnership between startups and research facilities of universities. Thanks. In absence of that research facility, startups are not getting help to get additional inputs to improve their ideas. On the other hand, students are not getting connected to the emerging application areas. And Shadwal is finding um, himself in a mature product category. So basically it is about trading. That means import product and sell it. And hardly there is a room of adding value because it's a mature product. And if you would like to get into an emerging product, then he doesn't get help from universities or other research establishments. And being a small farm, he cannot do all the things by himself because he doesn't have the necessary flow of money and the fund. And that's the kind of a case probably uh, Bangladesh and many other developing countries need to think through that how can you integrate our education into the knowledge creation, idea creation, innovation, uh, startup formation and growth of startups. And, and, and that seems to be a place uh, we need to work on. Now, how should, how should we start making progress here? Somehow we should start things. Now, can Shajol say that where should be our starting point to make progress along this line? Yes, sir. Uh, let me, I, I wrote a point yesterday, uh, last night. Uh, just give me a second. Shajol, do you need more time? Uh, no, sir. Uh, just a second. Yes. So, where can we start, sir? Uh, we need to start with the policies from the, you know, uh, government or those who make policies, you know, government cannot do all, all the things. Uh, those who are in the policy level increase our research facilities, you know, uh, like uh, Rafael said, uh, that they have research fundings and, you know, uh, those opportunities and also as Sanal uh, mentioned, they have, their education system is way different. We do not, uh, while we were in NSU, we did not have such facilities or you know research mm -hmm. opportunities to get involved with. Okay. Oh, by the way, so I would we, not have, to, we, we do not like to be very hard on NSU because we are all you you know NSU far better than any other institution. <laughs> but generally, it seems to be. That research facility in academic institution, particularly in engineering, Income. all across Bangladesh is is very at embryonic stage, at very early stage, uh, or at an infancy stage. Yeah, probably that's the way we might be a little fair to ourselves. Uh, no, anyway, uh, please. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so where was I? Uh, so uh, uh, we do not have uh, such facilities. So uh, what? We can do is you know improve policies at those levels that you know uh, universities can get involved with research, and that's why I did not go with you know uh, products at embryonic stage because it's very hard to get into the market. It's a lot of hassle, and uh, we are not, we do not have any ideas on that. But uh, in Bangladesh, what happens? You get in, get out of NSU, you try to you want to get into a job or you want to get into your father's business. That's what happens. But we do not have uh, areas to get uh, involved into, you know, research or 
either you get into a job or, or either you uh, get into your okay. business. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Shajal. Now, Ehsan and Rafael, you have one minute each to make your last okay. remark sure. that we, okay. we are producing increasing number of graduates and we'd like to create quality job opportunities of those graduates in Bangladesh. And if we just focus on mature technology, then we have no, no a little scope of adding value by you know, harnessing the mental capacities of the graduate, which Hajul is saying from his own experience. Now, with respect to the experience of the university, what you were studying, now what we should do to start the process so that increasingly we open the opportunity for our graduates to add value to technology, to innovation, through ideas, through knowledge. Would you comment on just a minute or so? I think, uh, sir, uh, if I want to say is, we need to, first of all, the only thing that you need to change is your mindset. Mm -hmm. You need to rethink how we look at education. So if I give you a very a short example, a bachelor student in Canada uh, requires a mandatory co-op program to go uh, to graduate. Mm -hmm. So while they are in their undergraduate degree, they already get an experience working in an industry. Mm -hmm. So we need to enable students to go out there and get experience, mm -hmm. either be it in the industry or be it in, the, in research. If mm -hmm. it's in research, you need to enable those capabilities in the university rather than making it just like an instruction-based education. We, you need to enable students to, uh, to go out there and get the experience. Okay. Because Thank without experience, when you come out, uh, you don't have anything to sell. Okay, we are now just the last end. Now, let me just summarize that uh, what is happening is that if you go to the mature technology industry, then you have very little scope of value addition. So you become basically a trading institution. On the other hand, if you would like to start going to the embryonic stage or the early stage of growth of certain innovation or technology, then though there is a scope, but we have very little or no research facility in the country. So until and unless we address this issue, it is very difficult for us to create job opportunities, quality job opportunities for our science and engineering graduate. And that is vital for a country like Bangladesh because it needs to open the opportunity of, you know, ex uh, of exploiting the capability of our graduates to drive the economic growth. And thank you very much uh, for your time and participation. I uh, hope- can I, can I, can I, Please do, please do. Can I have one minute? <laughs> yeah, because uh, I think internet connection, sorry. Sir, yeah. uh, I think uh, the, the, whenever I'm studying here in uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, mm -hmm. I have seen that the university is collaborating with the big giants, with the big players like Alibaba, Rolls Royce, uh, Singtel, mm -hmm. and uh, many other, uh, uh, ST Engineering, many other companies. So uh, I'm uh, totally agreed with Raphael. Raphael, I think, uh, told before that uh, we need to have a combination companies with universities because without collaboration uh, we cannot uh, actually try for startup or we cannot uh, actually think about it. because sir if we have the collaboration with university and with the companies like big giants if uh, suppose uh, let's suppose Nasser university has some corporate labs of uh, Grameen phone corporate lab or Robi Ajeta limited corporate lab then student has a has a opportunity to get there and to now, get now there here is a, now, now here is a point. If that yes, arts corporation does not have a mandate of innovating, improving the technologies, if those yes, arts corporation are just buyer of, you know, ready to use foreign technologies, then what is the value university can add in, part, in forming partnership with them? Uh, that is basically no scope because they are buyer of finished mature technologies. So I think what I Rafael was saying, that some of the startups came out from those laboratories. Uh, and those startups are having a very strong uh, research partnership with the universities because they are, they are collectively developing a new concept, new idea. But if just yeah, yeah. Bangladeshi universities go form partnership with firms who are basically importing mature foreign technologies, then that partnership uh, is probably likely not to grow. And what yeah, Fadul yeah. is saying, these products are mature and people are yeah. after brands. People are after brand. And so basically it, it limits your scope uh, to add value and also the hurdle of adding value seems to be quite uh, high. Uh, what may not be you know, surmountable for a new, uh, new entrant. Anyway, it is an issue what, is the, what needs to be addressed.
because in one hand we are producing large number of gadgets. Second thing is that we need to exploit or leverage the mental capacity of these graduates to drive our economic growth. Labor-based value addition is not a solution of engaging those graduates. And that is the place we have a two major issue. One is that if you go to the mathematical technology, then basically you become a trader. No, basically no scope of adding value. If you go to the early stage technology, then there is a huge research capacity in it. Now, probably the investing for the research capacity, pursuing emerging opportunities may be the And it may take a long time to see the result, but there may not be alternative to that. And thank you very much, Fajol. Thank you very much, Rafael and uh, Yesanu Lalim. It was nice to meet you and have this conversation. I hope we will have follow-up conversation and other people would share their observations uh, through their comments. Thank you very much, and uh, again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.